what's up everybody it's your boy d we back with another video okay this video was requested by somebody so i'm just gonna make it into a broader subject so that we got just more stuff to cover in this one video all right so the question was kind of what some study what are some study tips for the police academy so i can give a few but i want to talk about overall just going to the police academy what to expect how to prepare for it and what to do when you actually get there all right so before going to the police academy right you got to prepare yourself. Everybody knows police academy is somewhere you go. You got to work out. You got to run. Um, prepare yourself to do all that stuff before you go. There's a lot of running. There's a lot of push-ups. There's a lot of sit-ups. Prepare yourself. Start doing push-ups. Start running. Start doing sit-ups. Practice jumping over some fences. Uh, do all the things that you would do if you actually became a police officer. You know you'd have to keep up, keep in shape. Start doing that stuff before you go. You don't want to show up there and then you can't do a push-up. That ain't cool. Um, so start doing that stuff before you get there, all right? Um, prepare yourself mentally to go. Uh, make sure that you're trying to study up on some stuff before you go there. Myself, I looked up statutes. Know the difference between probable cause, reasonable suspicion. Know some stuff about the Constitution. Know some state statutes. Start looking that stuff up. Uh, try to look up state statutes before you go. Know how to read state statutes. Reading statutes can be kind of weird because they're always like written in some stuff that just kind of sometimes it's hard to understand. So try to go through that stuff and dissect it. Uh, read through the definitions so you know what what they're talking about in the statutes. That's important to know what the definitions are because it, it can have a word in there that you may think is meaning one thing, but the state statute is having a definition of something different. So make sure you're going through the definitions of the statutes, all right? So just being mentally prepared to go in. Know that what they're doing to you is all a part of the game. They ain't doing nothing to you. They ain't did but the class before you. So go in there, know what they're doing is a game, and just know that at the end of this game, you're going to make it out, and you're going to be a police officer. Don't sweat too much over the stuff that they're giving you or if they're riding your tail a lot. Just, just get through that, man, the first day. Sometimes be the worst. Just get through it, man. Next, before you go, make sure that if I'm going to do a separate video on the types of academy there are, but so there's a academy that you can go to that's put on by a police department, and there's one that's like put on by community colleges. If you're going to a community college one, make sure that you and you're not hired yet when you're going, and say you're sponsoring yourself or a department is sponsoring you to go, make sure you're applying for jobs. Start with applying for jobs as soon as you get an ability or before you get an ability. Don't start waiting to the last minute start applying for jobs. The states will typically hold your certification after you finish the academy for a certain little bit of time. But the high process for getting on with the police department is like four months. So start that process at least four months, at least four months. So start that hiring process as soon as you get an ability or right before so that when you get out, you can have a job or you start it before they can hire you before you even finish the academy and you got somewhere to go afterwards to start that. I was lucky to hire before I went to the academy. They actually hired me a month before, so I was getting paid a month before going to the academy, and I just went around the police department and did some stuff until we went, um, and they gave us some tips and stuff to help us through uh, before going, so we knew what to expect. Make sure you're spending your time wisely. You don't just go to just go into the academy, and then once you get close to the end, you start looking for jobs. Some people did that. They didn't find jobs or get hired to place until months afterwards. So make sure you look, get on, stay on top of that stuff. So let's say you, you you get into the academy, you're accepted or whatever. However, if you're hired, you're sponsored, you're going to a department, a police department that has their own academy, right? There's some things that you wanna do when you get in there, all right? My department doesn't do their own academy. So I had to be sponsored in order to go. So. Each topic, a different instructor taught a different police officer, typically from different departments from around the, the area that I'm in. Um, I have no clue what the fuck I'm just talking about. Start over. Make sure you're taking good notes, all right? Notes are very important. That's what's going to get you through. You cover a lot of topics, and once you get to the end, and you're like having to scramble back through the lesson plan they give you, that ain't gonna work because the lessons plans can be thick as, I don't know, like thick as crap, all right? So you wanna take your notes and that's consolidating everything and you're taking out the important parts. 
um, our note, our lesson plans gave us objectives. So what I did was I took every objective and I answered every objective up under that. All right. I'm going to show an example real quick. This one I'm about to show is useful for anybody in law enforcement. This is arrest, search, and seizure, constitutional law. That's for anywhere. It's not specific to any state or city or anything like that. So this stuff, I mean, start learning this stuff before you go. And it'll help out tremendously. All right. So notice my notes here. So each one that I have numbered was an objective. So like the first objective here says, name and describe the three sources of law. You got constitutional law, statutory law, common law. All right. Um, and I got the page number where it is. This is just consolidating everything that's in that lesson plan for that one objective. If you actually get the lesson plan for that that they give you, that one object that one objective is like so thick. Like it's two pages right there. You see, I got it down to just three things. It's the basic thing. Just be able to answer those objectives. That was usually what the test questions come from. Notice the instructor for this told us it's three questions per objective. Okay. So you kind of have in mind that and arrest, search and seizure was pretty lengthy, right? Um, if I'm scrolling down, it's what? 16 pages of stuff that, and that's consolidating the stuff. So think of how long that lesson plan was. So it's very important to take notes, right? Um, so you got that describe how the first amendment affects law enforcement functions. Okay. Um, there's something wrong with, I don't know what I did for this about copying and pasting the stuff. It doesn't matter. If you go back over your notes, try to put the objective in a question. How does the First Amendment affect the law enforcement function? If you can't answer that, then you know that's what you need to be studying. Because you should be able to answer your objectives. If you can't put in the question form and answer that objective, then you got some studying to do. Recognize the criminal and civil consequences law enforcement officers may face for violating a citizen's constitutional rights. Okay. So this is also stuff that I'm showing you right now that you can say, hey, let me be looking at the screen while he's got it up here and I can know that before I go because you're going to learn it. I mean, it's, it, this is everywhere. This isn't just my particular state. Um, know what subject matter jurisdiction is. This is doing jurisdiction. Explain law enforcement authorities affected by subject matter and territory jurisdiction. Right. Compare, contrast, reasonable suspicion, probable cause. Know what those two are. Probable cause, a fair probability that a crime has occurred needed for an arrest. Only reasonable suspicion is needed for a temporary detention. Okay, what's reasonable suspicion? A reason to suspect that the criminal activity is afoot is needed for temporary detention at minimal level of objective justification. Uh, more than a hunch, but less than probable cause. All right, so know that. Um, so this is just how I took my notes. I'm just showing you examples of stuff. Um, kind of going slow with it, as you can see these, these are the first like, things. Uh, compare and contrast the following police citizen encounters, voluntary contract, investigative detention, and arrest. I think I mean voluntary contact. Uh, it's like a field contact, it's not supposed to be contract. This is all stuff. This is how I did my notes. Everybody did their notes differently. This is very long. But this section is very long and it's very important. So of course it will be pretty lengthy. And some other sections could have been very short. Not every section that you're gonna learn is this long. So make sure you're taking good notes, man. When you're about to go back to do your state test, you're gonna to wanna to go back in your notes and be able to go read just off of that and not having to go through your lesson plans that they give you to find this stuff. So when you're sitting there learning, jot down some good notes, man. That's gonna help you. It's gonna save you a lot of freaking time. So next, while you're at the academy, make sure you're, you're making good friends, man. Start making friends. Don't be in there and be a loner. And but you can do this all by yourself. It's a lot of information to learn. Making friends will help you not only during the academy, but it can help you outside of the academy as well. There's numerous of times, if you saw it in my other video, you know that the police systems that we use, they don't all connect to each other, right? So let's say a uh, department over in the department next door to us, in the city next to us, they did something that I want to know about and I can't look up a report that they've written. Oh, I went to the academy with, let me call them up. Hey, what happened to this report? You need those connections, man. Start making those connections in the academy. One of the people that you may make a friend with, maybe the chief of somewhere one day, you need a job, hey, put me over there. 
Maybe the sheriff one day. Put me over there. Let me, you know, get some room. <laughs> but start making friends, man. Once you make those friends, start using those to build your study groups, okay? Study groups are very good. My experience with study groups is that you're gonna have one person in there that doesn't understand one subject, right? Let's say you understand it. You describing that subject to them not only helps them, but it helps you. Because they're going to they gonna ask a question probably. you can be like, dang, hmm, let me look. Okay, here it is. That's going to help you better understand it. So you take that test, you can be like, dang, I explained that to them. You already know it. So studying groups, man, whatever you don't know, somebody else will probably know. So studying the groups, is, that's very helpful, man. Next, just know this, that the academies are pretty generic, right? Especially if you go to a community college as your academy and not one that a police department puts on. Police departments are able to teach what the state wants to teach. And then at the end of that say, okay, this is how we do it. Community colleges don't have that luxury because they have so many different departments going there at the same time. So if you go into a community college, you're gonna learn the way the state wants you to learn it. Not necessarily the way your department will do stuff. So, so some things like traffic stops, that the way it's taught during the academy may not be the way you do it when you get out or felony vehicle stops. That may not be the way, probably not gonna be the way you do it when you get out. You're gonna learn stuff in the academy that's pretty generic. When you get to your department, whether it's, my department is pretty good sized department. So they send you through their own little academy thing right after, that's only a month long. So when I go to my department after the academy, my department then teaches the way they want us to do whatever they want us to do. So all that generic stuff thrown out the window, this is how we want you to do it. That's what's gonna happen. The smaller departments will sometimes just take you and say, okay, you got that. That's how we want it done. <laughs> Let's go from there. It's just generic so that if you're having to do mutual aid with another department, y'all are able to say, hey, we got the same training, we can do it. That's, that's all that is. When officers are coming in teaching that stuff, stand out, okay? There's numerous of times, especially afterwards, after finishing the academy, I'll hear instructors that will go teach a class and they'll come back and say, hey man, that guy right there is good. We need to try to go recruit him. And the recruiters are going there and actively try to get that guy, right? And that's good. If you're looking for a department, that's what you want. You want the officer to come in there and they say, dang, that guy's really good. And they go back to the recruiter and say, hey, you might need to check on him. Or it could be the opposite. You're already sponsored by them or you're hired by them. And they're thinking about hiring some instructor goes in there and sees you ain't worth my crap or you slept during during the time he's up there teaching, he's gonna go back and be like, hey man, that, that dude slept. Let, let's not let's not hire him. And they're gonna take that into consideration and probably not hire you. So make sure that when the officers come in there, present yourself in a light that makes them wanna work with you one day. Continue on with that. Make sure you're going in every day with a good attitude. All right. Most of the police academy is boring. All right. It's not doing practicals of driving and going to the range and all that stuff. Most of it is born. Most of it is you taking notes in the class all day, every day. You get that one week where you might do firearms, and then you do one week, you may do driving. I don't know if that's the week or not. But everything else is born, and you're sitting in class like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this is the police academy. It is extremely boring. And you're sitting there all day, and they're just packing information into you, giving you a test, packing information, giving you a test, packing information, giving you a test, and it's repeated every day. Most of the academy is boring, all right? You got to suck through it, still go in every day with that good attitude. You don't want them to, because you're, whoever is over your academy, again, if you're at a college or something, they're going to go back and tell your recruiters as well. Be me. Give your best at every practical, okay? There's firearms, driving, all that stuff. Give your best. A lot of times, if, let's say for driving, if you fail your driving a certain number of times, uh, you keep hitting cones and they give you chance after chance. The state gives them, what, three, two chances or something like that. You're done. Like, they got to kick you out. You can't move on without failing those type of practicals. Firearms, if you can't score the state standard, you're done. So the state standard here, I don't remember what it was. Whatever the state standard is here, my department had a higher standard. So if I didn't shoot at that higher standard, then my department would let me go as well. Like, so you got to make sure you're, you're taking time out to practice. Right as you're driving, you know, when you're off days, go to a park lot somewhere, pull into spots, back up. Backing up is what's gonna get you. All right, backing up is what's gonna get you, being a good backer. To finish this thing up, just, just make sure your overall 
just go in and every day to get attitude. That that that'll set you up for the best. All right. Um, there are some sample tests online. Quizlet. I use Quizlet a lot. People in the, the classes before us probably set up some quizzes to use. So go on Quizlet, type in whatever your academy is or whatever state it is, place academy, some stuff gonna pop up. And just practice using those tests. Very helpful. Print them out, take them over and over again. Very, very helpful. Actually, have fun in the academy, man. I wish I could say that when you get out of the academy, you'd be like, ah, oh, man, I missed the academy. You won't, you won't. But have fun while you're there, man. It's a part of the this whole part of the process, become a police officer. Everybody had to go through it. Just have fun while you're there, all right? Listen. Listen. Subscribe to the channel. Like, comment, share the video. All right, y'all.